，阅读科技旅行，生活可以很大，对话设计学习，思考不嫌太多。这里是 iTunes 获奖播客《狗熊有话说》，一听就停不下来的哦。Just a little conversation about getting your picture on the cover of a magazine. On the cover of a magazine. Hello, 大家好，欢迎收听这一期呃，狗熊有话说 Bear Talk， 我是大狗熊。那么。啊，很多国内的朋友都会比较疑惑，就是我们在找工作的时候，如果要找一个很好的社交平台，哪一个平台会是最好的？那么，啊，高兄我自己也有过这样的疑惑，所以今天呢，啊，我找了我的同事，在这方面是一个非常厉害的专家，在国外的社交媒体的平台呢，他基本上都有涉猎，而且啊，目前来说呢，是我见到在这个。LinkedIn 上面做自己的这个营销和呃内容推广做的最好的一位啊、呃、一位专业人士了。那么今天的嘉宾呢叫做 Jason， 是我的这个同事。那么 Jason， welcome and thank you.、Um, yeah, and the first question I I gonna ask is not for you but for me. Why am I took so long to invite you to my podcast? Because we worked together for nearly two years, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So.、Uh, Uh, but before that, could you could you introduce yourself first? Sure.、Uh, uh, yeah, and who you are and what what you are doing, and also as a content creator, what you do. Sure. What are you doing? Sure.、Um, so my name is Jason Greenwood.、Uh, I'm currently e-commerce manager here at Health Post,、mm -hmm. and that means I help to、um, design, implement,、uh, support, and maintain. All of our commerce technology, everything that kind of touches the customer,、uh, that allows us to sell our products and allows us to market our products,、um, all of those technologies are, are kind of under my responsibilities.、So、that means that I, I, I help to support all of the other departments、uh, and all of their e-commerce、um, requirements. So especially the marketing team, etc.、Uh, I've been with Health Post for just almost two and a half years now, and、uh, in addition to、uh, Health Post, I also I speak at a lot of,、uh, I guess, digital industry-focused events.、Uh, I produce, try to produce as much content as I can about the digital space, and、uh, try to share my knowledge and experience with, with、uh, whoever wants to listen. And、uh, and also, you know, I, I I try to do as much kind of e-commerce consulting as I can to help the market get better、uh, at digital execution. So、uh, basically, I started producing content very actively, pretty much the same month that I started with Health Post. Um, when I left, because、uh, I was working at a digital agency, so I've been in in digital for over 15 years. And prior to Health Post, I was a an e-business consultant at an e-commerce agency here in Auckland for five years. And basically, when I left that role, I made a conscious decision to start sharing what I knew via content.、Uh, pretty much the same month that I started here, and I've tried to share content ever since. Yeah, almost two and a half years. Yeah, nearly two and a half years. Yeah. Can I ask how many uh, social content, uh, social account you you have, and how many of them still you keep post every day? Yeah,、um, I have accounts on most of the major platforms.、Um, so I, I do LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook.、Uh, I do a little bit of Twitter、um, and a few other、um, more minor、um, social platforms as well. But certainly. I think over the last six to seven months, my focus has really been LinkedIn.、Um, I've, I've found that the, I guess, the kind of content that I was producing, which was primarily educational versus entertaining,、um, my content. I'm, I'm not a, I guess, I'm not a comedian. I'm not a, I'm not a joker. I'm not,、uh, you know, I'm not a, you know, I, I don't make pretty things、um, that lend themselves to Pinterest or Instagram that much. So for me, I found that my content、um, has found a better. More actively engaged audience on LinkedIn, but I do produce content. You know, YouTube. I have a YouTube.、Um, I have a pretty strong YouTube account.、Uh, 
uh, where I produce a, a, a vlog there, and then I've also got a podcast as well, mm -hmm. uh, an iTunes listed podcast as well, which is at the coalface. So I, I produce across a range of mediums, and I do a lot of writing as well. So on LinkedIn Pulse, I write a lot of uh, blog articles on LinkedIn uh, LinkedIn Pulse. Um, so writing, speaking, video, uh, I, I produce a range of content, but LinkedIn has definitely been a focus recently. So I remember um, at first when we met, uh, when we worked together in Health Post, uh, you mentioned uh, you did a lot of content on Facebook, right? Uh, Facebook uh, uh, video, uh, uh, building video, and then uh, you find uh, maybe LinkedIn is a more uh, bet a better platform for you. So can I ask uh, how? Uh, what makes you uh, make that change? From Facebook or from other platforms, marching to uh, LinkedIn. Yeah, well, surprisingly, my first platform that I started producing most of my content for was YouTube. Okay. So I actually had my first my first major social platform where I was really pushing out content that wasn't just for family and friends yeah. was YouTube, and, and that was really my at the coalface um, vlog. So um, that that grew pretty slowly, just because I think. Uh, YouTube is a very competitive place, mm -hmm. and it's really hard to establish an audience there first, um, especially with all the, all the the YouTube creators that are out there now. Yeah. Um, and then I and then I started to look at YouTube, uh, sorry, Facebook Live, because Facebook was really focusing on the live functionality. Yeah. And then of course they released re, uh, released Facebook Watch, and that that elevated video again on the platform. And I did uh, so. What I started to do was to effectively publish out. Uh, my same content to YouTube, um, also to Facebook, uh, with some some differences and some um, content that was completely unique to Facebook Live. Um, short little clips that were shot, say for example, on the move or in my car, um, that didn't require editing. It was just run and gun. Mm -hmm. Published that straight to Facebook Live. Um, I was doing that, and then and then what I found was that for those short little run and gun kind of clips, actually they were much more popular on LinkedIn. Um, Facebook is, is kind of hit and miss unless you're going to put some promotion and some marketing behind it yeah. to expand your reach and to target a very specific niche. Yeah. Um, in those scenarios, you can get some pretty good pretty good reach and you can get some pretty good viewership. Um, but I found that with LinkedIn, LinkedIn has such a much higher organic penetration, uh, especially for video because they're really trying to promote their video functionality at the moment. Um, it's a better place to get traction. Um, and so, uh, like I said, of, of sort of the last six or seven months, my focus really has been very, very heavily on LinkedIn but just because the reach and the engagement, those are the two things. Mm. The organic reach is, is for me and the type of content that I produce, which is primarily educational and sharing from my experiences, mm. um, they have a, 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 they find a much better audience on LinkedIn and those that audience then engages more. So they mm. ask more questions, they make more comments, um, they share it more amongst their audiences as well. Uh, and also because because LinkedIn allows you to follow someone without actually being a connection and then your content pops up on their feed, it allows them to share that out without actually being a formal connection because there's a limit on the connections but there's not a limit on your followers. Yep. So it gives you it gives you a couple of ways to be able to connect with an audience and engage with an audience. So uh, can you give me an example of how you use LinkedIn to, to broaden your, your, your network? Is there an uh, example like um, are you, are you, you post on Facebook but it has some uh, feedback and comments but on LinkedIn you get uh, something different? Yeah, LinkedIn is the audience type uh, and the demographic seems to be quite different between uh, Facebook and, and LinkedIn, people tend to be in a much more professional mindset to begin with mm -hmm. when they're searching their feed on LinkedIn. So they're in a, you know, even if they've got the Facebook and LinkedIn open at the same time on their phone, mm -hmm. when they switch between the two, their mindset seems to instantly change once they hit LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And when they start engaging with you, they're, they're in more of a mood to um, view, engage with, and consider educational and business oriented content in a LinkedIn environment versus a Facebook environment. Yeah. Because a uh, Facebook environment, it seems to be people are, it's a blend, right? Sometimes yeah. people are there to, and, and sometimes they'll be interested in, in business type content, but oftentimes they're they're in a personal mindset. You know, they're in a personal mindset with their friends and family. So yeah. um, it's, hit, it's a bit hit and miss with mindset on Facebook, whereas the mindset seems to be 
much more focused on business and professional um, professional learning, professional uh, engagement, mm-hmm. um, professional connection. Trying to yep. you know link up with people that are in the same industry as you or in industries that you're interested in, mm-hmm. and uh, you know it's an open sharing environment. And certainly with especially with LinkedIn acquiring Lynda.com and some of the other acquisitions that they've yep. made. They certainly are bringing much more of an educational bent to the LinkedIn platform than ever before, and that's that's keeping people in that professional um, that that professional bent when they when they get to the LinkedIn platform. I think. Yeah, that's cool. Because also that source, uh, what I've uh, learned from uh, from uh, my own experience on learning on using LinkedIn via via Facebook, first there are. Quite different. Yeah. yeah. When you use Facebook or other social media platforms, it's all mixed together. Yes. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, but before that, everyone thinks, or a lot of people just ha- has a, a misunderstanding of, of LinkedIn. So just uh, consider it as an online CV. Yeah. So um, it's uh, there is a saying uh, in, in China that if you uh, if you update your status on LinkedIn, that means you want to find a new job. You're looking for work. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So uh, so um, how do you think of, of that? And uh, if uh, do you think this is a uh, comment issue or uh, it's a misunderstanding of, of that platform? I think LinkedIn is going through a evolution, especially since Microsoft purchased them. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're going through an evolution where big name creators are starting to move to the platform because the attention yeah. is increasingly on the platform. Yeah. And because you don't have to pay to play yet to be there and you don't have to pay for organic reach. Um, they're now offering. Um, they are now offering uh, much better marketing tools for business pages. But in terms of personal profiles on LinkedIn, mm-hmm. as opposed to business pages or business accounts, um, you know the, the organic penetration is still high. So any creator that's that's really starting to build a, a strong brand on LinkedIn um, versus other platforms, where really oftentimes they're needing to pay for distribution mm-hmm. on LinkedIn, they're realizing they don't need to pay for distribution yet. I think it's coming, mm-hmm. and I think that's going to change over the next. 6, 12, 18 months, Microsoft will introduce a lot of new uh, marketing tools that will put it on more of a par with Facebook in terms of its marketing functionality because let's be honest, in terms of marketing functionality, you can't really beat Facebook and Instagram in terms of their their ad manager and the way that you can you know cross promote uh, content and the way you can do segmentation and the way you can do your remarketing and the way you can build lookalike audiences and so much of the functionality on Facebook and LinkedIn is really sorry Facebook and, and Instagram is kind of the best there is from a social platform marketing perspective yeah. um, and and so you know that's why marketers have flocked to Facebook and Instagram and really ruined the experience in some respects uh, yeah. just because it's so easy to market well on Facebook and Instagram and I think that you know uh, LinkedIn will eventually try to emulate a lot of that ad platform functionality within their platform um, because they want to draw the marketers they want to draw that revenue they want to draw that they they want to draw creators at the end of the day and we're already seeing a shift Um, you know there's been a couple of very very famous uh, uh, just slipped my mind who this famous creator was that just recently moved over to LinkedIn Um, uh, 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 Taylor Nikolai, Taylor Nikolai, um, just recently moved over to LinkedIn as a, as a, you know, and he's famous for Snapchat and and Twitter. And he's got over a million followers on Twitter. He's got, you know, I don't know what his numbers are on on Snapchat, but they're massive, you know. And he's just recently started to post very, very heavily on LinkedIn. He's making LinkedIn a focus, and as a very, very famous Twitter and Snapchat content creator and Instagram to lesser degree, um, you know, he has brought a whole different tribe and a whole different vibe to LinkedIn and as these creators from other platforms migrate their audience over to LinkedIn it's inevitable that the focus of the platform will change and I think that's what's created the growth and popularity of LinkedIn is some of these massive headline grabbing creators have moved over to the platform and when you have that happen they bring their audience with them and so even if their audience wouldn't typically be professional they they want to be where those people are creating content yeah. And especially when they're creating unique content that you can only see on LinkedIn. Mm. And that's what they're doing. They're starting to create content that they only produce for LinkedIn. And so you have to follow them on LinkedIn to see their content. Yeah. 
So I think that's what's created the exodus, and I think I think um, it will only take one or two or three very famous KOLs from China mm -hmm. to make a big power move on LinkedIn, and all of a sudden LinkedIn status in China will go through the roof. Mm -hmm. But it requires some groundbreaking people to start to start the change. Yeah. There are some um, uh, KOLs already moved to LinkedIn uh, on China, but we will talk about China later. For example, it's, it's quite a different scenario. Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, it's a totally diff a different uh, um, uh, market. And, yeah, yeah, the mindset is different. And uh, speaking of LinkedIn, uh, I, I just recent recently uh, met someone uh, met some uh, uh, very. Uh, uh, Famous people in uh, in business, mm -hmm. and I found there uh, before uh, everyone. Uh, if if you uh, ask for com contact, and they will give you uh, email and Facebook or uh, Instagram, some something like that. But now uh, they just gave me uh, the the LinkedIn account link. Yes. So this uh, this make me realize, okay, it's not a uh, not just hunting for job tour. Not just a search job, a search tool for job. It's also a place to communicate uh, professionals yes. uh, with each other. So yeah, that's uh, that's uh, something make me to realize it's different from uh, before that. I I thought it's just a just a search tool for job hunting. Yeah, I think LinkedIn's going to have to get better at uh, the ability to share your LinkedIn profile with something like what Facebook has in their Messenger with their kind of QR code kind of functionality. Yeah. Um, I think LinkedIn needs to come out with something similar to where somebody with their smartphone can just hold up the smartphone, the QR code, snap it, and instantly it will connect them via the LinkedIn app. Yeah. I think they're going to need to come with something like that because like you, I've noticed... Uh, especially over the last couple of years as I've gone to digital conferences and I've spoken and everything else um, I don't even take business cards with me anymore so mm -hmm. if I want to connect with someone I just say oh what's you know what, what you know is this your profile on LinkedIn and they say oh yeah that's me and I just instantly hit connect they on their phone they approve and we're instantly connected within five seconds yeah. in person at events mm -hmm. um, so we don't even we don't swap business cards anymore we don't we don't we don't send emails to each other anymore. We just yeah. connect on LinkedIn, yeah. and then we private message directly via LinkedIn if we want to catch up for a coffee or something like that. So the the LinkedIn messaging functionality I use a lot, and certainly LinkedIn is my de facto way to connect with other um, professionals yeah. at events, at conferences, at speaking gigs, at you know at social events, that kind of thing. It's it's just the the default way that I connect with people now is LinkedIn. Mm. Yeah. And, um uh, here's another question. If uh, if you you are listening to the to, to this episode of podcast, and if I'm okay, it seems quite interesting. But how can I start if I'm a, a beginner and uh, even I don't have an account? How how can I start on LinkedIn and connect with with uh, some uh, uh, KOL or? Some professionals. Mm -hmm. How to start that? Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. It's pretty straightforward. It's like most social platforms. You just have to start. So the first thing yeah. is to, to create your account, uh, which requires just a very minimal amount of information. You don't even have to put up a profile picture of yourself. Although I recommend that you do, yeah. so that people can recognize you. One of the reasons why I suggest people put a profile picture up is so that when people are searching for you at an event, they go, "Oh, yeah, I'm watching yes. this. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah, I definitely." Because sometimes the names are the same, you know. Yeah. And so you want to make sure you're connecting with the right person who's on the stage or the right person in a conversation. So you put a profile pic, people go, yeah, that's definitely him, I'll connect to the right person. That's the first thing, so to create a really rich profile, to put as much information as you can uh, in, in both your title, your 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 intro summary, uh, as well as your, your work professional bio, any certifications you have, education, basically make as rich of a profile as you possibly can so that people can A, identify you, and B, it, it generates interest in your profile. That's the yeah. first thing. Yeah. I think then, um, because you don't have to connect to people, to follow people, start to do some searches for your industry. So um, now uh, LinkedIn over the last uh, month has started to introduce full support for hashtagging. Uh, in, all of its, uh, in all of your post content, it actually auto-recommends certain hashtags. You can actually follow hashtags from your profile now. 
You, uh, so there's a lot of hashtag supported functionality that there never used to be before. So I'd, I'd follow hashtags of interesting content that's interesting to you. Then I would start engaging with the people posting that content. So, so comment on that content and that starts exposing your profile to people in that industry or in that space or people following that hash, hashtag. Uh, and then oftentimes they will then, if you follow them, then oftentimes they will turn around and follow you as well. So that means you don't have to go through the formal process of connecting as a connection, which the person actually has to accept for you to be connected as a connection in the first place. Um, you can follow and people can follow you with, with very little engagement required. Um, and the, and, the, and you, you don't have to approve them to follow you. They can just follow you. Yeah. Um, and then from there, I think starting to make meaningful connections, um, both pure online connections as well as as at meetup groups. If you go to a meetup group, start connecting with the people at the meetup group via LinkedIn. If you're going to conferences, if you're speaking at conferences, if you're, you know, can, you know, link up with people in your industry that you already know, start to connect with them as connections. Yeah. And then what happens when you start to produce content and push that out, um, your connections, when they comment or when they engage with your content, that is immediately surfaced to their circle of connections. So it starts to expand where your content is exposed to. And then I, I would suggest decide what type of content you're most comfortable creating and create that. So whether that's a short form post, whether that's a long form article on Pulse, because everybody can publish to, to their blogging platform, yeah. or if it's video, or all three. If you're comfortable with all three, do all three. But just start producing content um, that, that starts to build a magnet for people that are interested in that type of content to be able to, to connect with you uh, so that they can follow you. I mean, mine's been a slow, steady build. I mean, yeah. when I started actively producing content on LinkedIn, I think I had, I don't know, I think I had like around a thousand connections and I've now got, uh, or, uh, sorry, about a thousand followers. Mm -hmm. And I've got about 1,700 followers now since I started to actively create um, content on LinkedIn. I've got nearly a hundred videos on LinkedIn. I've got about 15 uh, Pulse articles on LinkedIn now. Um, so it's a slow build, but you know, um, it, it just organically builds over time and it's been really good. Well, 17,000 followers. Uh, 1,700, 1,700, 1700. not 17,000. So oh. 1,700 followers, yeah. which is not a lot. I mean, there's, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk, I think he's got over a million followers, you know, like he does on every platform. You know, there's some, there's some very, very big influencers on LinkedIn now that have, you know, half a million, million, two million, three million followers on LinkedIn now. So it's, it's becoming an actual influencer based platform now. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, uh, if, if you, uh, if anyone listening to this podcast, if you want to learn how to use LinkedIn or how to start on it, uh, uh, also another way, uh, Jason mentioned, uh, Linda.com. There are also a lot of uh, tutorials that you can choose to to uh, to, to learn it, and um, it's uh, it's also quite useful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, the LinkedIn Learning platform, which is the former Linda.com, it's called LinkedIn yeah. Learning now, yeah. has a lot of content on there specifically about specific subjects, including how to use LinkedIn itself. Mm. And now uh, let's talk something about China. Yes. It's about uh, LinkedIn in China. Uh, uh, it's officially uh, some facts about LinkedIn in, uh, in China. It's officially uh, went into China market at 2014. And named Ling Ying, uh, it's uh, it's a very uh, very good uh, very good name in Chinese characters, and now it has more than uh, 20, 20 million users, uh, but which is not very very much. Yeah, yeah, because the, there are other uh, entertaining platforms has huge followers. Uh, WeChat, obviously, and Weibo being the yeah. being the two biggies. Yeah. And they have, uh, they kind of had some uh, independency, uh, which they can, uh, in China, they produce their own app named uh, Shi Tu. It's a, a red horse. It's, the name is a red horse. It's similar as, uh, as LinkedIn uh, native app, but it's just for China and the color is red. Wow. And uh, it's an animal on it, mm -hmm. so which is so different from, from LinkedIn. Uh, uh, general, uh, general uh, VI, mm -hmm. but uh, I think it's just uh, they they pay a lot of attention on China market. But actually, uh, it's, uh, if you search, uh, if you search the reports of uh, LinkedIn's performance in China market, it's it's not that bad and not that good. Yeah. Because uh, the uh, the general manager CEO just left last year, mm -hmm. and uh, and also um, uh, the reports are just. Kind of uh, 
Uh, there are also some negative reports about about LinkedIn, and I think uh, it's maybe because this is a really、um, dynamic market and has some very unique、uh, user needs, and also、um, you know it's not easy to copy the same business model、uh, to to China market because other uh, 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 big Big companies they also have the same issue. Yes. Yeah, like Google, they they already left. And, and Facebook. I mean, look, I、yeah. think I think what's interesting about China that you educated me about is the fact that unlike Facebook and Google and Apple and a lot of the you know Instagram and the major、yeah. um, Western um, social platforms,、um, you know, LinkedIn is one of the very very few Western platforms that actually can operate behind the Great Firewall of China yeah, yeah. without a VPN or without some sort of complex hard workaround. For people to use the platform, and and even though it's a Western originated platform,、um, the fact that the I guess the Chinese government allows it to operate behind the the Great Firewall of China is a massive advantage, in my opinion. It's a huge advantage for the LinkedIn platform, but it's also a massive advantage for the China market, who are trying to expose themselves to the Western market and trying to connect with the Western market, whether it be for business, for content collaboration, in any in any way, shape, or form.、Um, this allows The KOLs, for example, to expose themselves to a completely new market outside of the very walled garden of WeChat,、yeah. it allows them to、um, grow their influence in ways that they couldn't in any other way.、Yeah. So I actually think LinkedIn's in a great position, but also China, the market itself, is in a great position if they start leveraging LinkedIn more. Yeah, it's like a portal. Yeah, from from two different worlds. Yeah, and.、Uh, The, maybe the only、uh, the only barrier right now is、uh, language and control. Yes, that's something、uh, not easy to to remove,、mm-hmm. but、uh, it's easy to to connect. And so far as、uh, uh, as my experience is quite、uh, a good way if you、uh, if you really want to、uh, learn how to work in a、uh, Western com- country、uh, company. Or if you want,、uh, if you would like to find a job,、mm-hmm. uh, it's it's quite useful to to build your LinkedIn profile before the job party. Yeah, and yeah, it's a it's a great way also to follow industry leaders that you're interested in,、yeah. or even even CEOs or. Or hiring managers of companies that you might be targeting. If you start following them on LinkedIn, especially if they're producing a lot of content,、mm-hmm. you can actually learn a lot about their business. You can、yeah. learn a lot about their personal interests. You can learn a lot. You you, you can you can engage with their content,、um, and, and it's it's kind of a less it's a less aggressive engagement yeah, yeah, yeah. model than going straight to them via direct message and saying, "Hey, will you hire me?" Yeah, It, yeah. It's 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 a more subtle way. Of exposing yourself to them as a possible employee, that that then you can have a dialogue with that over time,、yeah. than just smashing them between the eyes and being so direct. So I really like LinkedIn for the ability to develop a relationship over time with with influencers.、Um, it, it's a, it's a bit unique. It's a bit like Twitter in that way, in that it's a it's it's really easy to just engage with somebody's content, maybe make a content here and the, a comment here and there. It puts you on their radar. Uh, in a non-offensive way, it's not. It's not. It's not offensive. It's just natural. Yeah, and I found some comments from Chinese user、mm-hmm. about about LinkedIn, and uh, if uh, it, it's the interesting thing is there are some very totally different comments on it.、Mm-hmm. And some people said it's okay, single, real, and professional,、mm-hmm. and all the information on that、uh, on that platform is serious, and they are learning and. From it, so it's quite helpful、mm-hmm. for for career. And、uh, some people said it's just、uh, some a lot of chicken soup for souls.、Mm-hmm. Yeah, chicken soup for the soul. Yeah, yeah I understand so, uh, on that. And it's、uh, they're just just not talking about、uh, real things.、Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it depends on what you are searching.、Uh, and also,、uh, a very interesting comment is that、uh, LinkedIn is useful but boring. <laughs> well, I tell you that may have been the case even a year ago, but、yeah. with with the advent of video and major creatives moving across the LinkedIn platform, 
my feed, it, it really depends on who you follow. But yeah, yeah. you know, if you're following interesting people, doing interesting things, producing interesting content, your feed is definitely not going to be boring on LinkedIn. Yeah. But it really, it's, yeah. it, it, it's completely under your control. Yeah. You know, who do you follow? Who do you connect with? And and who do you choose to stay connected with? Mm -hmm. um, one of the mistakes I see on LinkedIn happen almost every single day uh, is I will get a connection request. I will connect with someone. Someone might even send me a really nice connection request with maybe a paragraph saying, "Hey, I really enjoy." your content let's connect let's maybe meet up at a, a conference or whatever and I'll say sure let's connect and then literally the very next message is them trying to sell me something mm -hmm. and this is something I experience almost every single day on LinkedIn and I immediately whenever that happens I immediately disconnect from the person mm -hmm. I if I was following them I stop following them mm -hmm. and I basically completely disengage with that person because it is the wrong approach on LinkedIn mm -hmm. um, it, it, it it, it is a great sales tool if you are focused on building relationships which may lead to, to collaboration or business yeah. as opposed to saying I'm making this connection purely to be able to market to someone's inbox. Mm -hmm. That's a totally different mentality to LinkedIn mm -hmm. and I think the people not using LinkedIn well, they connect with you, they almost, they almost trick you into connecting with them and then immediately via direct message mm -hmm. they're saying here's my company, this is what I do, um, you know, when can we schedule a call? Uh, and, and it's such an offensive yeah. use of the platform. I feel like my inbox has been violated. Yeah. And, I, and I think most people feel that way. Yeah. So I, I think if people are smart, it's a fantastic way to make connections that could potentially lead to collaboration opportunities, but you can't go in a, into it with that expectation. Well, that's uh, really uh, helpful advice. Yeah. And also, uh, I think uh, for, for China, uh, a lot of our listeners, uh, our uh, audience are uh, uh, work and live in China, and uh, maybe you are quite interesting about LinkedIn and how to use it. And uh, for for my part, uh, for my opinion, uh, I have to say, uh, if uh, if you would like to uh, learn from professionals, especially from uh, uh, people who already uh, live in Western countries or uh, uh, that kind of uh, Company you would like to go, and that kind of um, the, the POLs you would like to uh, be inspired. So LinkedIn is a, a perfect choice, but it could not that uh, mix together yes. like like, uh, like Weibo or other platform. Yes, and for uh, for a lot of Chinese, I think uh, we like dynamic. Yes, we like a lot of things mixed together and make it, and also. Uh, a lot of Chinese uh, China users would like to uh, uh, explore the the uh, the, uh, the functions behind the the, the platform or uh, explore the limits of the, the platform. For example, uh, one of uh, my uh, my friends said uh, he used to find uh, some girls to 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 take out on a uh, on a like a um, like a food. Command so, uh, yes. social platform. Not, yes, not just uh, on on some some date date dot com, but also on some. Uh uh, you know, Other social platforms. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you look at Instagram and you know that whole concept of sliding into someone's DMs. Yeah. You know, and, and maybe maybe asking them out or, or trying to communicate with them uh, in a romantic way mm -hmm. on a platform like Instagram. It's becoming very common to slide into someone's DMs. Yeah. That is that is very. Um, it's a dangerous territory on LinkedIn if you use LinkedIn in that way, yeah. Uh, yeah, because it's so focused on the professional market. It is considered exceptionally unprofessional. Yeah. You know, where on other platforms it's maybe fifty-fifty. Okay, some people will be okay with it, and some people will be really offended. On LinkedIn, it's ninety-nine point nine percent of the time. Mm -hmm. uh, if you used it in a non-professional way, yeah. people would be highly, uh, especially females, would be highly, highly offended mm -hmm. if you were leveraging the platform to kind of private yeah. message them to maybe ask them out or something like that. So yeah. um, that would definitely be a, a little bit of a word of warning. Um, you know, because uh, you know, naming and shaming you know, mm -hmm. on these platforms is becoming very common, yeah. and so screenshotting a DM and then publishing that with a link to the person's profile, mm -hmm. you know, you can immediate you can immediately destroy your professional credibility yeah. just like that uh, with one professional misstep. So just be a little bit cautious and make sure you keep it professional. Would be my only advice in that regard. Yeah.
find professionals and behave like a professional. Yeah. I think well, I mean, I, I think there's a misconception. I think people are creating really entertaining, fun, non-professional type content on LinkedIn now, yeah. um, just, just showing their daily lives. And sometimes it's a mix of professional and personal, mm -hmm. but it's, it's never... It's definitely got a slightly more professional tinge to it yeah. than other platforms, yeah. and certainly you wouldn't um, you wouldn't get the same kind of um, backlash mm -hmm. on other platforms that you get on LinkedIn. If you the, the further you stray from the professional on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. um, especially if you're doing it on a one-to-one -one communication basis, um, it can really harm your 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 professional and personal brand very quickly. Helpful advice. Mm -hmm. So, and also uh, in China, there are some other uh, platforms, uh, not only for social network, like uh, like Zhipu.com. Uh, it's kind of like Chinese China style uh, Quora. So, uh, uh, and it's also very uh, helpful for for professional learning and uh, uh, even for job hunting. But uh, I, I think LinkedIn is a very, uh, it's just like what we said before, it's like a window, mm -hmm. uh, op both open to China and to, to Western countries. Mm -hmm. So uh, if you would like to uh, improve yourself as a professional, probably uh, start to build your LinkedIn account. Yeah, I, I would, my advice to the Chinese is, and I've seen quite a number of Chinese profiles as, you know, because LinkedIn will recommend people for you to connect to or people to follow, uh, it, like any social platform, it will make recommendations of people to, to, that you might like to connect with or maybe the yeah. people that you might know. Um, what I've seen in a lot of the Chinese profiles is that it's either one or the other. They either focus exclusively on China and their entire profile, for example, is in Mandarin uh, or in Chinese characters, um, or their profile is 100% in, in English because they're targeting maybe uh, maybe going and working in, in, in a Western country or something like that. I think there's actually, I, I've never seen it done that well yet on LinkedIn where somebody will have, you know, uh, everything in, in both Chinese and English, for example. Mm -hmm. So, you know, blending those two in almost a 50-50 degree um, basis where, you know, you, you, you say everything that you need to say to communicate professionally to the Chinese market in Chinese, but you say all of the same stuff um, but maybe in a slightly Western orientated way in English. Yeah. And I think there's a huge opportunity for that to blend the two cultures together to where you, you can connect equally well with the Chinese market and equally well with the, with the English speaking market. I mean, if I spoke Chinese, for example, my profile would be like 50-50. It, it would be speaking to the Chinese market so I could connect with Chinese in a meaningful way, but it would also speak to the Western market. It's just unfortunately I don't, I don't speak Chinese, so I can't. Mm -hmm. But if I could, I definitely would. And I think that should be a focus for a lot of, um, especially Chinese KOLs. I think you know, doing the 50-50 thing is, is a very powerful tool to connect with multiple cultures. I, I would do that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's a very, a very helpful advice for me. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah. We've talked a lot, and uh, yeah, and, uh, and I think uh, this is a huge topic. Uh, if you really want to learn how to use uh, LinkedIn as your social network or just as your uh, professional improvement tour, uh, it will be a lot. Of, uh, do, do some research and also um, check some other uh, articles or something else. Mm -hmm. So, um, so and, uh, at last, uh, if we want to connect you, how, how can we find you? Just connect with me on LinkedIn. Yeah. So, <laughs> J J Jason Greenwood, uh, you know, uh, e-commerce manager of Health Post. I don't think there's actually that many Jason Greenwoods on LinkedIn, although there are a few. Uh -huh. uh, but if you just Google me, yeah. uh, I think my, my profile on LinkedIn is one of the very first pro uh, profiles that turns up in Google. Mm -hmm. When you Google Jason Greenwood New Zealand, uh, okay. I think I'm the first one that turns up. So, connect with me there or any, any other social platform. They all, uh, I kind of connect to them all from all the various platforms. So, I can be found almost anywhere. Yeah. Uh, uh, and yeah, I'd love to. I'd love to connect uh, with your audience and and get to know some of your audience better. That would be awesome. If they got any questions, they can shoot me a DM yeah. uh, or whatever, and I'll be happy to kind of share my advice if I can. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing I would suggest also that might be helpful to your audiences is, is 
LinkedIn's video is still very immature. So the ability to create like a playlist or things like that, it doesn't really exist natively on LinkedIn. So what I did is I created a, a LinkedIn Pulse article that I created as a video playlist. So the only thing in that article is links to all of my videos. And every time I create a new video, I link to that as the, as the most recent entry in that page. Mm -hmm. So that might be something your audience might like to do. If they start creating a lot of video and they want to create a playlist, just create a LinkedIn Pulse article called I just called it Jason Greenwood's video playlist on LinkedIn, um, and then and then uh, whenever somebody views your articles, they can go there and they can see that, and it gets indexed by Google as well. Wow, well, yeah. Uh, and uh, I will add Jason's LinkedIn uh, link in this uh, in this podcast show note, so uh, you can even check check that. Awesome. Right. Thanks, Bear. It was yeah. uh, awesome chatting with you, and uh, yeah. we will definitely have to do it again sometime soon. Yeah. Let's not leave it. Let's not leave it two years to, yeah. to do it again. <laughs> yeah, it's like. You are the hottest girl in the class. I <laughs> take two years to invite you. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that, but uh, but no, I've really enjoyed it. Really yeah, enjoyed it. It's yeah. been a lot of fun. Yeah. Thank you, and yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you guys in the next episode. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Bye bye. Just a little conversation. But hey